Welcome to My Body Fits, and in today's video, I'm gonna teach you the kettlebell swing. Ah! I'm personal trainer and kettlebell coach Mel Anderson and I am so excited to be teaching you the kettlebell swing today, the beating heart of kettlebell training. Now you'll probably see in the sidebar hundreds of other videos teaching you this move, ranging from tiny ladies with tiny bells to beasts of men with gigantic bells that might feel a little bit intimidating. So I'm going to teach you the way I've been teaching since 2017 to women just like you. I love hearing stories of how the girls in my class easily picked up 15 kilo bags of dog food, barrowed tons of slate up and down their garden, and helped their husbands shift 25 kilo bags of plaster from B&Q to the car, leaving the men in the store with their jaws on the floor. Yes, this is all from training with kettlebells, and it all starts here with the mighty swing. Once you've mastered this exercise, you'll be telling stories of your own like this because I teach you in a way that means you can use heavier bells too, getting way more bang for buck from your workouts. Now when it's taught properly and safely, the kettlebell swing is a fairly complex exercise, so I'm going to break it down into small manageable chunks for you today and make sure that you get the absolute essentials to get you going. If you enjoyed this video, please drop me a comment and a like, subscribe to my channel and click the bell to be notified when my new videos come out. If you're a woman over 40 and you've been feeling more niggles and aches lately, my free gift to you is my Stretch and Rise series, a super short and simple daily mobility routine to give those joints some love and attention and have you feeling like you want to jump out the bed without the moans and groans. Simply follow this URL or click the link in the description. Okay, let's just jump straight into those swings. The movement pattern we need to nail down before you even touch the kettlebell is the hinge. So it looks like this. My hips go backwards. I have a soft knee and a straight back. That's the main pointers of the hinge here. Now, the hinge is not a squat. Let's get that out of the way straight away. So a squat is a maximum bending of the hips and the knees and you can see like we're bringing our backside down to the floor whereas the hinge is maximum bending of the hips but just softening of the knees you can just consider that as a softening rather than a bending and I'm going to want to keep my my from my head to my lower back in a really nice straight line okay standing up and then hinging back. Now, here's a fantastic little trick. You're probably wondering why I've got my broom. I haven't actually been cleaning. Fantastic little trick that you can use to keep your back nice and straight so you really get a feel of what it should feel like. So take the brushy bit off your broom and place that pole on the back of your body. You want it to connect to the back of your head the middle of your shoulder blades and the base of your spine. Now, keep all three points connected and then just move your hips back, okay? Like so. Now, you're really gonna feel that here if you've got it right, okay? This helps you feel like what a good hinge pattern should feel like, okay? So do that a few times with a broomstick if you need to press pause and go and grab yourself a broomstick, go and do that. And we're just gonna practice this move a few times with the pole. So we're literally pushing the hips back, standing up tall. Hips back, standing up tall. Now take that pole away and continue practicing that movement. Keeping your back nice and straight watching where your gaze lies and so now when you stand up we can think of this as a standing plank okay now put those two things together hinge to the plank so we hinge standing plank hinge standing plank that's basically it that's the movement pattern right there we're switching from our hinge to our plank now in order to move that heavy piece of metal, we need to put some power behind that, okay? So we're gonna get that power from our hamstrings 
from our glutes and from our abs, okay? So we're pushing our hips back and we're gonna shoot our hips forward really nice and fast. And we're gonna squeeze here, squeeze here, squeeze here as we get to the top. This is where the plank comes into play. That stops us leaning forward and then hurting our lower back, okay? So hips back and stand up. Hips back and let's just practice doing that quite fast and you can like snap the hips. You want to think about snapping the hips but not so much that they go forward like this, okay? So here, here, put a little bit of speed behind it and really tense up all those muscles as you stand up. Here's from the front, so you can see what happens here, here, and stand. You can see that snapping, nice and tight. So have a little practice, and then we will move on to the setup. Now, before we start moving that bell, we've got to make sure our setup is solid, okay? So, a couple of things to think about. First up, I want you to think about a triangle on the floor. The kettlebell is the top of the triangle and your feet are the bottom of the triangle, the two corners of the triangle. Don't be too close, don't make it a really wide one, okay? Run about kind of width width apart. So we wanna set up with that triangle on the floor. Next, we're gonna bring that hinge in that we just learned. So we're gonna put fingertips into our hips to push our hips back. Now remember here, I want a nice straight back and I should feel that loading up my hamstrings right there, okay? So from here, we're gonna lean forward and we're gonna put our hands on the bell, okay? A nice tight grip. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull our shoulders back. So from here, we're gonna pull the shoulders back and down. And then we're gonna lean into our heels. So the weight of that bell starts to lean into our heels, almost as if you were gonna drag the bell along. We're not gonna do that. Just kind of grab hold of it and pull the weight back into your heels as if you were gonna start scraping it along your mat, like so. Okay, so let's just go through that again. So we've got a triangle on the floor, fingertips into the hips, push the hips back, hands forward onto the bell with a nice tight grip, pull the shoulders back. We want these big, big muscles here to be engaged, fully engaged. So instead of being here with a rounded back, we're here with a nice straight back. So hinge, hands on the bell, pull the shoulders back, pull the weight and I just want you to practice that a few times stand up nice and tall hinge hands on the bell transfer the weight to the heels stand up Okay, now we've learned the movement pattern and the setup, let's start to move that bell. First up, we're gonna do what's called the hike pass. So we're gonna get into our setup position and all we're gonna do to start with is we're gonna pull that bell through our legs, kind of like an American football pass. If you think about how they chop through the legs, that's the kind of movement we're looking for. Now, a great tip I got many years ago, imagine you've got a chair behind you. When you pull that bell through, you wanna hit the bottom of that chair. And it's quite a forceful pull through. You don't wanna kind of just like, be like delicately pulling that because that's where we can only use like tiny bells to do that. Once you start using fairly heavy bells, you need to really pull it through to create momentum, which we're gonna come on to in a minute. So, hike pass, hint, fingertips into your hips, Hinge the hips, hands onto the bell, squeeze nice and tight, squeeze those glutes, uh, sorry, squeeze those lats, pulling back into your heels and hit that chair. Ready? Here we go. And park the bell back where you started. Stay in that nice, connected, tense position. Ready? Hit the, hit the chair.
Okay, next up, let's have a look at the pendulum swing. So we're gonna start with the hike pass, and then we're just gonna let that bell float back to wherever it wants to float back to. Because it's quite a heavy weight, once you pull it back, you'll have a hard job keeping it there, okay? We just wanna let it float. We're not gonna stand up yet. We're just gonna feel what it feels like for that bell to float. As soon as it gets to the top point and it's on its way back, pull it back. Float, pull it back. So here we go. Fingertips into your hips. Push your hips back. Hands on the bell, nice and tight. Squeeze the lats. Weight into your heels. Hike and swing. Hike, swing, hike, swing. Okay, all there is left to do is to stand up, stand to attention. We're gonna do what's called the dead stop swing, which means we're gonna hike through. We're gonna stand up, remember that standing plank. The bell's gonna float up and then we're gonna go through the legs for the height pass again and then park the bell. Okay, so watch carefully. Hinge, hands on the bell, squeeze, squeeze the lats. Okay, it's practice time. So we're gonna do a set of five swings at a time. And each time we do a set of five swings, I'm gonna give you a little pointer to focus on so that we go from the feet all the way upwards, thinking about everything that needs to happen with our body when we're swinging. Okay, practice set number one. We're gonna think about our feet connecting to the floor. So this is a heavy weight that we're flinging around here. And if we don't think about connecting to the floor, your toes can come up and you can feel quite unstable. And when that bell goes out in front of you, you can feel quite sort of unsteady and risk falling over, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna think about spreading out our toes really nice and wide and really thinking about connecting and almost grabbing the floor with our feet. So remember all of our cues, fingertips in your hips, push the hips back, hands on the bell, squeeze the lats. We're gonna hike through and stand up five times, just keeping our feet connected to the floor. Next up, to help us bring all that tension up through your legs and into this area here, a really good tip is to think about pulling your knees up. So if you just stand and do that now, relax your legs, pull your knees up, feel what happens to your quads here when you think about pulling your knees up. Relax, pull them up. So we get loads of lovely tension and you start to squeeze your backside as well. That's great, that's what we want when we get to here, we wanna be solid. So as you come up through the swing, think about pulling the knees up, okay? Five swings. So, fingertips into your hips. Push the hips back. I think I'm a little bit far away. <laughs> okay, push the hips back. Hands on the bell, hold it nice and tight. Squeeze your shoulders down. Thinking about knees five times, ready and All right, continuing with that idea of bringing tension up through your legs, we're now gonna think about our backside and here. Okay, so at the same time as thinking about pulling the knees up, squeeze those glutes really tight and pull your tummy in. So do it without the bell for a moment, here. Squeeze, squeeze. Squeeze, squeeze. Squeeze and squeeze. These are already been squeezing because you're already doing the knees. Let's put that into the bell. Ready. Hinge the hips back. Hands on the bell, nice and tight. Squeeze the shoulders back into your heels. Squeeze your bum, squeeze your belly. Ready and. Two 
two more tips to go. Okay, next one, arm height. So you can think about the bell reaching somewhere between your waistband and shoulder height. And you're aiming for it to go not too far out of that range. So it needs to at least lift above your, uh, your belt and kind of preferably stay here. The odd one is gonna go a little bit higher, but really what we're trying to prevent is it coming really up high here. Try and keep it nicely within that range. So just practice, nice and straight. <laughs> Let's add the bell. So, hinge the hips. Hands on the bell, nice and tight. Squeeze the shoulders back, weight into your heels, ready. Okay, the last tip is about speed. So, I'm gonna do this in slow motion. The bell comes through your legs. We're pulling it through nice and fast. We come up, snap, which helps to propel the, propel the bell up. From here, there's a split second where it's gonna just float and get ready to come back down. Don't let it just fall down on its own. We wanna pull that bell through. We wanna create a, a momentum by pulling it down so that then when we, we bring it back up again, it's got some speed, okay? So slow motion is here, up, now start to pull, and pull, so it goes fast. Now, let me just, if I get one of my smaller bells, what we tend to see, one of the, one of the sort of biggest mistakes I see is like pulling the bell up, with your upper body and then allowing it just to float down. Let me just see if I can demonstrate that. So, now here, nice and slowly. You see there's no snap in my hips. I'm just pulling that bell up and down. So the bell, the bell's mo being moved by my upper body. It's not being moved by my lower body here. And actually, that feels a little bit sore there. So we wanna use these huge muscles here, these and these, to create power so that bell is flying up and then you're pulling it back down again. So let's do that. <clears throat> so think about when the bell gets to the top here, instantly pulling it fast back down again. I think my distance keeps changing. Here we go. Hinge the hips. <sighs> Hands on the bell, squeeze nice and tight, squeeze those shoulders back, weight into your heels, and. swing is everything is the same uh, the hinge the standing plank squeezing your shoulders the speed everything is the same apart from the fact that we're having the bell in one hand now when you've got a heavy bell in one hand what can tend to happen is I'm going to show you from the side as we pull that bell through it can make you rotate around like this so the bell can pull you in a rotation pattern, but we wanna stay really nice and straight. So a good tip for beginners when you first start swinging, single arm swinging, is to swing the bell through and bring this hand and tap the back of your hand and watch, that just keeps our shoulders aligned. Without that, I could be pulled forward too much. So while you're learning, through, tap the back of your hand, through, tap the back of your hand, okay? Let's go for five swings on one side, put the bell down, five swings on the other side. 
I'll do it from the side and then I'll do it from the front as well. So here we go. Once you've practiced loads and you feel really confident with the single arm swings, then we're gonna do a swing change. So this is where we reach the end of our set with one hand and we're gonna change and continue straight after with the set in the other hand. And this is called a swing change. So I'm gonna do three on one side and three on the other just to show you what it looks like. And basically when it's up here, and just before you would start to put it down, you're gonna very quickly let go, grab with the other hand, and through you go. I'll show you from the front, and I'll show you from the side. Bonus number two, once you feel really confident with your single arm swings and you've had a go at swing change and you feel really confident with that, we can do hand to hand swings, which means every time you get to here, you change hands. Pew. Okay, I'm gonna show you from the side and then from the front. Okay, the final thing to say about single arm swings or hand to hand swings is the position of the handle, okay? So when we swing, we start off with the handle this way, hand over the bell. As you come up, your hand stays with the palm facing down, knuckles facing up. But as you swing through your legs, you're gonna rotate your hand halfway, thumb towards your bum, so just think, thumb to bum, okay? So from here, we go through, and then come back to there. So rotate through, back to there. joining me today for the awesome kettlebell swing. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial video. Go down in the comments and let me know how you got on. And for a limited time only, I would love to see your videos of you doing that kettlebell swing. And I'll have a little check over and let you know how you get on. All you've got to do is email here and I'll have a look at it for you. Okay, I'll see you next week with some more super simple kettlebell workouts.